Okay, well, it's Halloween, and what better way during a pandemic than to get out of the house and research your ancestors in a cemetery? You know, it's clearly uh, social distancing, so uh, we can safely get out and research our ancestors in a cemetery. I've got 10 tips for you on how to research uh, your ancestors in a cemetery. Hey, welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. I am super excited you're here. And well, if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss any of the videos. And well, let's get started. It is fall. It is a beautiful time of the year to get outside, do a little walking, get some exercise, visit your ancestors, and dig for, okay, not literally, but <laughs> dig for some of your uh, family history research and do it in a cemetery. So if you are getting ready to go on a road trip to a cemetery, I've got 10 tips for you uh, to do this most effectively. Uh, and we're gonna start right now. All right, tip number one is to go online before you set out on your adventure to make sure that uh, they're actually open. Go online, check out their website, check out the rules call ahead and make sure even during a pandemic that they're actually open because some of the cemeteries are not but most of them my experience has been that they are tip number two is uh, to go on find a grave billion graves and or cemetery census and see if your ancestors are already there if they are uh, note all the information that you can about that ancestor and also make sure if you're on a find a grave that you leave flowers. Uh, leaving flowers is kind of like a, a paper trail that says, I've been here and other people are researching the same ancestors will know that you've been there and can reach out and contact you. Okay, tip number three is while you're on uh, find a grave and billion graves, make sure that you research the cemetery in addition to your ancestors because if you search the cemetery, you can search the surname uh, for other ancestors that may be located in that same cemetery. So it'll save you time running all over the cemetery trying to find more ancestors. So that is tip number three. Oh, and on find a grave, start a virtual cemetery to collect all of those people into one personal little cemetery on find a grave. All right, tip number four is to make sure that you print your ancestors information before you set out or have access to it on your cell phone. Uh, almost all of them, Find a Grave, Billion Graves, uh, Ancestry, all of them have apps that you can access on location. Tip number five is before you go, pack a few things. First of all, a snack and maybe some water, you know, if you want to have a picnic. But also consider when you are uh, taking photographs of cemeteries and of the tombstones, uh, to bring a little rake to help clean up around the, around the, especially the ground um, stones. And uh, if you need to, you can get a soft brush to help brush away some of the dirt and dust on the tombstone. You might consider a light or a reflector or even a mirror to help uh, push some light onto the tombstone to help bring out the letters. It's not advisable these days to uh, chalk or to uh, do any kind of markings on there to help bring out the letters. Uh, we want to preserve those stones for as long as possible, but you can use spray bottle with uh, clean water and sometimes spraying the tombstones help. Also, you might want to consider bringing a, um, a set of clippers to help clip away the grass around the tombstone so that we can see everything and uh, don't forget, in case it's muddy or it's maybe there's some snakes out there or something, if you're in an overgrown area, that you might want to bring a pair of boots. All right, so tip number six is that you want to photograph a close-up shot so it's readable of your target ancestor, but you also want to shoot a wide shot uh, of the whole plot because it's likely that the other people nearby are also family members. And for those of us at home who can't make it to the cemetery and you've posted these photographs on find a grave or billion graves 
it might be that that is the key to help somebody else because there's a wide shot that's readable that we can see some of the other uh, other people that are in the same plot because you want to photograph everybody that is nearby your target ancestor. All right, tip number seven. Before you photograph uh, a, a grave marker or a tombstone, make sure that you clear it off with that soft brush of any grass and debris. You can use clippers to clip around if you need to. Uh, and, and, and really try and get it as readable as possible before you photograph it. If you have to, you can use a spray bottle with clear water, but if you use any chemicals, you need to get permission, uh, not only from the cemetery, but from the family in advance before you uh, try and clean a tombstone. Um, I have another episode on how to clean tombstones. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes for that and maybe a flag on the screen. Um, also know that, uh, like I said before, using chalk or Charcoal is not advisable these days, especially because uh, we're concerned about preserving those softer stones. All right, tip number eight is that you can use the Find a Grave and Billion Grave apps right on your cell phone. You can take a picture of the tombstone and add it right to the app, right on site while you're here. You can type in all the information that you see. And if you're really tech savvy, you can put the GPS coordinates in so other people can find it. Hey, tip number nine is to pack a lunch, bring some food. You always want to have food on board, especially when you're on an outing and a beverage. And well, you never know, you might have an opportunity to have a picnic. Hey, bring the family. It might be a great opportunity to get everybody together and go for a walk in the park. All right, well, tip number 10 is uh, to bring a camera. If you're anything like me, you like to take pictures. And these old cemeteries are great places, not only for architectural, uh, architectural photography, but for wildlife photography, nature photography. There's a lot of great old oak trees around here. It's just awesome place to take pictures. I hope that was helpful. It was a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's time to get out into the cemeteries, get out of the house and do something fun, help find your ancestors, photograph them, upload them, share them with the world. And you know what? Uh, one tip that I've got for you that's kind of a bonus is a video I did on what all the little symbols mean on the tombstones. I will leave that on the screen for you now. So I hope you uh, have a great day and get out there and, and uh, enjoy the cemeteries.